Hello students, welcome to all of you Shiksha 360. Today basically we have to start the chapter number 13 that is IT Act 2000-2008 part 1. This chapter we have to cover in 3 to 4 parts along with the discussion of MCQs. Okay, And definitely whatever we are covering here definitely will help you in the examination to answer the questions. So for interested students for the CAB elective, you can also join our regular sessions. In the session, we will provide you the like classes, recorded session, notes, MCQs, case studies, numericals, all these things we will provide them to you. <clears throat> Regularly sessions will be taken by the team. So now let's start our discussion for any query you can contact on our email ID. So first of all, cyber law. What is cyber law? Cyber law basically we can say that a law regarding the technology. Cyber law makes companies can feel safe and secure in conducting their online business. <clears throat> Cyber law, it is also called Computer Misuse Act. Sometimes this will also one of the question. That is Cyber law, it is also called as Computer Misuse Act or Computer Crime Act, Computer Related Offenses. Fraudulent access to computer, unlawful use of computer, use unlawful use of computer, offenses against right to privacy, computer crime and abuse, electronic transaction act in different countries. Okay, so these are all the names of the cyber law in different countries. Okay. So just you have to go through all these things. No need to remember. Just you have to go through. In India, what it is known in India, in India it is known as the IT Act, that is Information Technology Act. The IT Act 2000 <coughs> contains 15 parts. How many parts? 15 parts. This is also one of the question. Containing various sections. It parts like we can say that like if divideation in different groups, various sections covering electronic records and electronic signatures, liability of network service providers, electronic contracts, duties of certification authorities, computer crime and data protection. All these things comes under the IT 2000, <clears throat> under the different parts. The original IT, this is very, very important. Already they have asked one time this question. The original IT Act contained how many sections? That is 94 sections. 94 sections further divided into 13 chapters, 4 schedules. Okay. So you have to remember that basically the original IT Act contained 94 sections divided into 13 chapters and 4 schedules. In our country, Legal issues in a respect of computerized banking, clear in our country, legal issues in a respect of computerized banking have taken a shape after the IT Act 2000 has been introduced. So first time the Act has introduced in India in the year 2000. Later on, this Act has been amended in the year 2008. Also an amendment was made to include copyrights in 2012. Very, very important that copyright when it was included in the year 2012. Enabling the digital rights management, DRM. This is also one of the full form they will ask. What is DRM? That is digital rights management. That is if anyone has written any book or we can say any article. So it has copyright on that, that no other one that use basically use that thing. It is normal, but not say that this article it is written by me. that is we can say that copyright issue okay so some of the legal issues related to the computerized banking are as follows are as follows so before moving further that you have seen that we have covering very small points here <clears throat> that leads to rise of one or two questions so before moving further that i will Discuss one or two these questions with all of you. What is the IT Act 2000? So what is the IT Act 2000? That is a law covering electronic record, a law covering physical records. 
So first of all, you have to remember that electronic record, electronic record. All the options are to be similar. So you have to be eliminate the option. So it has to be electronic record, not physical record. So option number B, it has to be wrong. So we have to find that either A, C or D. <clears throat> because we know that basically IT act related to the electronic record. So this one, this one or this one. A law covering electronic record, liability of network service, liability of network service, liability of network service. Providing, providers, electronic contracts, computer crime and data protection in India, providers, physical contracts. Is there any relation regarding the physical contract here? No. So option number C it is to be eliminated. So now. In law covering electronic records, liability of network service providers, electronic contracts, computer crime, and physical protection. No. It is basically data protection in India. Clear that is regarding the data protection in India. So option number A will be the correct answer here. <clears throat> okay, all these things we have covered under this paragraph. So you have to be remember all these things, points how they will ask the question in the examination and how we have to be eliminate that point. Okay, so here, what is the elimination point? That is physical. <clears throat> All things it is to be regarding the electronic. Now, next question. How many sections, chapters, and schedules does the IT Act 2000 have? We have already covered that. IT Act 2000 have 94 sections out of that. 13 schedules, sorry, 13 chapters, 4 schedules. So option number A will be the answer, 94 sections, 30 chapters and 4 schedules. <coughs> okay, so all these things you have to be remembered. They will ask everything in the form of question in the examination. Now move to the next question. What legal issues related to banking have emerged after the introduction of the IT? That is, it is related to the electronic banking, physical banking, digital banking, mobile banking. Digital banking, it is recently introduced bank term. Both are in recently introduced term. Not at the time of introduction of that. So, it will related to the legal issues related to the electronic banking. So, option number A will be the answer. Many of the students will go with the option number C or D that is related to the digital banking. Digital banking, you will have heard the term in the year of 2013 or 14, not before that. <clears throat> okay. So kindly remember all these things. Now move back to the theory part. Hope you are able to understand all these things. What type of the question they will ask? And many more questions we will provide you in the group also for the practice purpose. Now move further. Legal recognition of electronic records. Earlier physical records are to be provided. That is handmade records. Now the electronic records, clear. What is the validity or legal recognition? Records rendered or made available in an electronic form and accessible so as to be usable for a subsequent reference will be treated as valid electronic record. Thus, banks can now maintain their records in the electronic form here. Like also Bankers Evidence Act. So can anyone tell what is the year in which this act was enacted? So this is also related to the physical record. They have do some changes under that. So the electronic records can also be validated. <clears throat> okay. Acknowledgement of a receipt of electronic record. The acknowledgement of a receipt of electronic record has the following implications. Like we are sending, so we will require the acknowledgement of it. Where the originator has requested the addressee before sending it in electronic record, that receipt of the electronic record must or shall be acknowledged. Clear? That is, it shall be acknowledged. Where the originator, sometimes they are not agree to acknowledge that. Where the originator has not agreed with the addressee that the acknowledgement to be given in a particular form or by a particular method. So in that case, an acknowledgement may be given by any communication <coughs> or by any conduct of the addressee sufficient to indicate that to the originator that the electronic record has been received. Clear? 
sometimes they are not able to give the acknowledgement in that particular way. So they are also saying that you have to send inter acknowledgement like by the communication or any other ways which help us to understand that the document or electronic record has been received. Okay. Now move to the next point. Legal recognition of digital signature, very, very important. Here, two points are to be introduced. One is private key, one is public key. We will cover in the next point also. Very, very important digital signature. Like if you have cleared the CAP or JAB examination, like preparing for the CAP, so you have already cleared the JAB. So in that case, digital signature they have done. And in that place, you will find one question mark. You have to be validate that question mark. After that, it will convert it into the green tick. So that is also a digital signature. So legal recognition, like you are providing <coughs> your certificate to your department. Clear? So they will say that kindly validate that digital signature. Only after that, your reimbursement will be cleared. Okay. So legal recognition of digital signature. Wherever any information or any other matter needs to be authenticated by a fixing signature or on any document needs to be signed or be a signature of any person, such a requirement will be considered to be satisfied if such matter or information is authenticated by means of digital signature. Even presently, land records are also to be digital signature. However, the manner, the format, there is also one form. However, the manner and the format in which digital signature shall be affixed, the manner or procedure which facilitates identification of the person affixing the digital signature, clear? Which facilitates identification of the person affixing the digital signature, control process and procedures to ensure adequate in integrity, security, and confidentiality of the electronic records or payments, etc. <clears throat> okay, all such there will be specific procedure. Will be governed, all these things basically will be governed by the rules prescribed by the central government. This is very relevant for the banks. Banks can now use digital signature in case of payments, remittances, appraising loan proposals, and even putting up internal notes between various office electronically. This is not presently used in the banking sector up to that much or not even in any other offices here. But in the upcoming time, we will see that everyone basically will use digital signature. Here, very rarely, very few documents till today signed by the digital signature, okay? So next one, that is the submission of forms in electronic means. Wherever any form, application, or any other document needs to be submitted in any office, the same may be done by means of such electronic form. Clear? The same may be done by means of such electronic form. Banks can now open accounts of the customers electronically, like through the tab, tab or through the mobile phone also by receiving forms by electronic means. Similarly, customers may submit their loan proposal to the bank electronically. This will facilitate e-banking. Like, first of all, you have to authenticate yourself with the help of the Aadhaar card or any other means. After that, you can use all these things. <clears throat> Receipt or payment of fee or charges. Receipt or payment of fees or charges may be affected by means of electronic form. When banks go for e-business, they can receive or pay fees or other charges electronically. <clears throat> Thus, customers need not to visit the banks. Like you are paying the bill, you will get the receipt. So they give instructions to bank electronically and bank debits to their account and credit the same to the appropriate account. Okay, So that is a shift or payment of fee or charge. Retention of electronic record. You can save. Okay. So documents, records, or information can be retained for any specific period in electronic form. 
However, it should be ensured that the information contained therein remains accessible so as to be usable for subsequent reference. Here we can also say that. so as to be usable for subsequent reference. The electronic record is retained in the format in which it was originally generated, sent or received, or in a format which can be demonstrated to represent accurately the information originally generated, sent or received. Okay. So it is retained in the same format. And why basically we can say that is for subsequent reference. The details which facilitates the identification of the origin, destination, date and time of dispatch or shift of such electronic record is available in the electronic record. Clear all details, it is also available in that. All the provisions mentioned above do not confer any right upon any person to insist that any organization, including bank, should accept, issue, create, retain, preserve any document in the form of electronic records or affect any monetary transaction in the electronic form. Clear? There is not any, we can say that we cannot forcefully, okay, confer any right upon any person to insist that any organization, including bank, should accept, issue, create, retain, preserve any document in the form of electronic records or affect any monetary transaction in the electronic form. Okay. So that is regarding the retention. Okay? And here my motive it is that is you have to be just go through all these points properly and attempt all the questions, whatever we are discussing here and what we will provide you in the group so that you are able to just answer the question in our examination. The motive, main motive is to answer the question. And definitely you are able to answer the question if you've gone through our sessions very well. We are taking the sessions regularly. Next one, that is the certifying authority to issue the digital signature certified certificate. So what is the, who is the certifying authority? So any person who make an application to the certifying authority for issue a digital signature certificate. Okay. Any person may make, clear anyone can make an application to the certifying authority for issue of a digital signature certificate. Like all of the Aadhaar cards, it is also to be digitally certified. On receipt of an application and after consideration of the certification statement <clears throat> or the other statement, the certifying authority may generate the digital signature certificate or reject the application. It will depend upon them. So what are the reasons? However, in case of rejection, the reasons are there are to be recorded in writing. So what are the reasons? First one, no digital signature certificate will be granted unless the certifying authority is satisfied that the applicant holds a private key corresponding to the public key to be listed in the digital signature certificate. Okay. So that is private key publicly. Clear private key basically with the help of that, you have to de-encrypt the data. Okay. Like we can see that we have to log the data and with the help of the public key, unlock the data. Simple language. Applicant holds a private key, which is capable of creating a digital signature. The public key is to be listed in the certificate can be used to verify a digital signature affixed by the private key can held by the applicant clear assist by the private key held by the applicant. Okay. The public key it is to be listed in the certificate can be used to verify a digital signature affixed by the private key held by the applicant. So in the new environment of e-business, the banks may play an important role as certifying authority. The system auditor should ensure that the certifying authority while issuing digital signature certificate shall certify that what they have to certify. Yeah, that is further they like who can issue the certificate. It has complied with the provisions of the IT Act rules and regulations. The subscriber identified in the digital signature certified kit holds a private key corresponding to the public key listed in the digital signature certificate. The subscriber's public key and private key 
constitute a functioning key pair. Clear constitute a functioning key pair. So sometimes in the examination, they will ask which one is correct or incorrect regarding the rejection. So what are the reasons? First one, that is applicant holds a private key corresponding to the public key. That is this to be listed in the digital signature certificate. Second one, applicant holds a private key which is capable of creating a digital signature. Third one, the public key to be listed in the certificate can be used to verify a digital signature affixed by the private key held by the applicant. Clear. So all these things it has to be required for creating a digital signature certificate. Okay. So in this session we have to discuss up to this much point very basic points we have covered in our today's session and very we cannot say that we have discussed much content very less content but hope you are able to understand all these points in the next session we will cover many more points along with many more questions. So like here that some questions are already here. And after that, we will discuss the legal definition of computer crime. Uh, and in that, we will discuss also 10 to 12 questions in the next session. Hope whatever we have discussed there, you are able to understand. So thanks to all of you for joining this session. And I request to all of you, if you like the content, please share with your friends also. So thanks to all of you.